Today, we're going to make a camera controller. Click Create C Sharp Script. Call it Camera Controller and double click it to open Visual Studio. Because we're going to handle multiple kinds of cameras, we need to make an enum to select one of multiple options called Camera Type. And we're going to implement this video first person and third person, but we'll also include free orbit for later. Now we're going to have to make a field to store the type of this camera. And we're also going to have to make a field for our target. And a boolean to decide if we're going to target the player by default. All initialization should be done in an awake method. Here we're going to say that if default player, then the target should be whatever game object has the tag of player. We're not going to be using the start or update method. For things like moving the camera, you want to use late update because it fires after all other update methods have finished. Now we're going to use the switch statement, which allows us to execute different code based on the value of camera type. I'm using a Visual Studio extension called ReSharper, which allows me to automatically generate these cases. But you'd be able to type them. Since we're only going to implement first person at the moment, we're going to have the rest of them throw a system.argument out of range exception. A first person camera need only copy the position and rotation of our target. Tabbing back over to Unity, we'll see that the camera does not yet work because there isn't a player. So let's create an object for our player. Remembering that you must zero out the transform position of any empty you create manually. We're also going to assign the tag player and click on our object in the hierarchy, press F2 and rename it to player. One last thing, we must make sure that the main camera has the default player checkbox ticked. Now if we launch the game, the camera will attach itself to our target, but we're still not able to move the camera. That's not very useful, is it? Tabbing back over to Visual Studio, we're going to have to add a way to move the camera. And we're going to have to take some input to do this. Input is always taken in the update method. We're also going to have to introduce a new variable for the local rotation as stored. We're also going to give it a default value of zero. Here we're going to use input.getAxis because it allows us to use both the mouse and a joystick. Now you might notice this magic number 60. I'm actually going to replace that with a new variable called sensitivity, which we're going to have to define at the top of the file as a float. And now if we tap over to Unity one last time, we can finally move the camera with the mouse. Now remember, I said we were also going to implement the third person camera. So here goes. First thing you're going to have to do is add a new field, a vector3 offset. We're also going to give it a default value of slightly above and behind our player. To test this, we're going to have to make one of the models our player. So I'm going to take the capsule, drag it back to the center of the scene, tag it. Delete the player, rename the capsule, and now this is our new player. So just go to the camera now and change its type to third person. It's not going to work automatically because we haven't put any code under the third person section of our switch yet. So it's falling through to argument out of range exception. Here, we're going to take the code that we'd put for the first person camera and we're just going to also apply the offset position. Tapping back to Unity, we'll see that while we are attached to the capsule, we're not behind it like we should be. And it's an easy fix. If we go back to the code, we just need to wrap our offset in transform.transform direction. This makes it relative to the forward of the transform. And this gives us our third person camera. So now we have a first and third person camera controller. 